my name is Belgica and I'm an actress based out of California and today we're talking to two casting directors. I'm so excited. We're going to have a conversation with them. I'm going to ask them a few questions that you might want to also know the answers of and if there's anything that you would like to ask them in the future, I'm going to be working with them again in the future to bring you more information and I'm also learning. If you want to introduce yourselves, tell us who you are and where you cast and what you cast. I'm Yvette Garcia Davila and I've been casting for a long time and I'm currently casting mainly branded um, content, but also I do some short films, which are my personal favorites. And I'm Roxana Altamirano, uh, based in Los Angeles. Uh, casting, um, I work almost exclusively for an ad agency called Sandwich and they do commercials and branded work as well. So I work for them and then I also pick up uh, freelance jobs, uh, short films, uh, internet projects, um, just kind of anything, you know, anything that comes my way and fits within my schedule that I'll, I'll take. Roxana actually reached out to me about cast in project and I thought that was so cool and so generous of you guys to take the time to do that and be willing to give all of this information because I know you know in this industry we all have jobs that just take so much of our time you have families so Roxana you created Cast in Project yeah right? so how it started um, was that I was actually casting I, I had a project that I that I had to street cast for so I they were really looking for very authentic fresh Hispanic uh, young young people. So I went to different schools. I went to Sotomayor, which is the performing arts uh, school here in Northeast LA. And there's several, and I just kind of, you know, uh, there's no Craigslist anymore. So you kind of really just has to have to go to, or maybe it's still around, I don't know. Uh, but um, you have to go places and you have to go to the streets and say, hey, you've got a great look. As creepy as that sounds, you have to go say, hey, you've got a great look. I'm a casting director. Here's my card. And also Instagram. You know, I would go on Instagram and I would try not to be a creep, but I would DM people that I thought maybe wanted to act, but, you know, didn't have any credits to their name. And I thought they would be perfect for the project. So I started DMing people. I started to notice that a lot of young people in the Hispanic community it, where we are um, in Northeast LA actually had an interest in, in, in performing and want an in entertainment industry in front of the camera, but didn't know where to start. I even befriended some uh, recent art school graduates who said, you know, we went to a performing arts high school. When we graduated, we had no idea where to look for auditions. Yeah, same. Yeah, so I was like, well, why <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> you know, like, I guess you can start Googling, but the problem is trust. Mm -hmm. You can Google, but you have no idea that the the search that comes up is actually going to be someone that just wants your money or if they actually have legit advice. So I wanted to start building that trust. First, I thought like, why don't I, you know, do start a, a street cast agency that just showcases a bunch of great looks that are not out there. But that wasn't really what was needed. What was needed was just information. Like, this is where you go for auditions. These people are not going to rip you off. Inspiring one another to just go and answer an audition because you can do it. Like, you know, it just it, like your latest post, for example, just start like that's the number one thing you could do is just start um, stuff like that. That's really what was needed. I think I actually asked a lot of my network, Hey, do you know any Latin cast and directors? And luckily Yvette, you know, was one that some producer friends knew and they connected us. And I was just so glad that I have a buddy in this, you know, cause she has the same mission. I think, you know, like I'm so, so we realized. Yeah. So you created this Instagram account in order to put more information in like a trusting way, you know, like, hey, I'm not charging you anything. Like, here's some info. It, it's also to promote, uh, to, to, yes, to create a, a community of talent 
here in LA of Latino talent and diverse talent, really. Like we just want to be inclusive and uh, promote opportunities and hopefully promote the people that are promoting those opportunities. So uh, it's easier for talent to find them. I was telling Roxana that it'd be a really good idea to introduce ourselves also on the Instagram page and show people, look, these are the people that are posting here. So it's not just another, you know, random Instagram but. account. <laughs> yes, but. Oh my gosh, there's so many bots. And then there's one more person, right? That's posting. Yeah. So Selena, you know, she has a baby. And so I know exactly how crazy that is. So she is another casting director. She's from Mexico. I think she's in town now though, but she uh, is does freelance commercial work and, and branded stuff and uh also and uh she's really busy and she doesn't really she doesn't have the account information she doesn't oh, okay. she doesn't post but she wants like if if we were a community she wants to be part of the community because she also is you know fighting for, for sure. or, you yeah. know in every project she does so and there's been a several that are just like oh great but you know not posting I think there's a there's a lot of us Latin you know uh, Hispanic casting directors that not don't necessarily post but are like in the fight together right. and like, you know incur- encourage one another to- yeah we're in the team of go cast it project here's yeah. the <laughs> yeah. so that's great so that's how we know each other and I of course will leave the link in the description for this Instagram page and then for the next question I wanted to see if from your perspective what actors could do in order to make the industry a little bit more equitable this is not an answer to your question but I think one of the problems that the industry has is that they have preset ideas of what someone is supposed to look like and that they're all interchangeable that you know all Latinos are all Latinos and it doesn't matter whether you're from Peru or Puerto Rico or where are you from Belgica I'm from Mexico for oh Mexico you know like you know we're all the same we're all want the same and and when we say coche carro auto like there's so many things that even the writers and the showrunners should be aware of when they're representing uh, a Latino uh, or Latina person on screen so I think that's a problem that in order to fix it <laughs> uh, I think we just need to be more assertive and mm-hmm. saying you know Latinos come in all kinds of colors we're white we're brown we're black we are all you know uh we have different religions <laughs> there are muslim latinos and latinas there are jewish latinos and latinas and it's about kind of creating that rainbow of of diversity and that beautiful rainbow of diversity that we are so in terms of how actors can be proactive about it i think it's just answering to the calls that are for their, um, that are within their wheelhouse. But at the same time, I don't want to limit anyone to, uh, if, if it says that the role is supposed to be a white guy, why can't a brown guy go and audition for that role? And maybe they'll line it. By that, I don't mean if they're looking for a 15-year-old girl, don't go as a 30-year-old man to audition for that role because I get a lot of those submissions too, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, but you know, I, I guess there's, there's a certain amount of risk that you you can take mm-hmm. and what's the worst that could happen that they say no and then you just move on it's, yeah. it's part of you know the yeah for sure you're gonna get a hundred no's before you get that one yes you just have to keep trying and not give up when you were speaking about like there's different kinds of latinx and different kind of hispanic in our, our community it's so funny because a lot of the time when somebody's like oh can you do a spanish accent I, i'm like do you mean Spain? They're like, no, no, no. Where are you from? And I'm like, Mexico. They're like, yeah, just let your natural accent come out. And I'm like, I came here when I was four. I can try and replicate my mom because she has an accent. I'm just like, can you tell me at least like Mexican accent? A lot of times I don't know. The times that I've actually specified I need a Hispanic actor Mm -hmm. are my own projects and like projects from like friends. Mm -hmm. Because if it comes from a client, if it comes from Starbucks or if it comes from Facebook or whatever, they just say ethnically ambiguous. They want someone of color kind of <laughs> but that we're not sure where they're from but no, we don't but we don't like 
Maybe. Like, they don't know. 99% of the jobs that I cast um, commercials are this character is, you know, it used to be back in the day minority. But, you know, uh, thankfully, they don't no longer use that anymore, thankfully. And that wasn't that far (laughs) back (laughs) when they changed it to ethnically ambiguous. And that's everything that's Black, the Hispanic, that's um, mixed race, that's um, Middle Eastern, that's, you know, um, Asian, that's everything. And so we get like hundreds of thousands (laughs) of submissions. And it's... It's crazy. So a lot of times the client, and this is, I think this is less film because I think the director has someone in mind. They usually have written with someone in mind. This is for commercials. Yes. They know they want someone POC. And, uh, and so you should submit. Going to the ethnically ambiguous, I can also relate to that. And I also feel like maybe it's our job as casting directors to, to help the client define that a little bit more because I've also encountered that and ethnically ambiguous and this this is I'm calling out all the clients that I've had and not mentioning one in particular that they would say and ethnically ambiguous but they don't mean too black or too brown they don't want that and that pisses me off mm-hmm. there's definitely still a sense of the client uh knowing this is they don't want to alienate and to me this is very old school But if you're going for commercial work, the client doesn't want to, wants to be safe, wants to, doesn't want to alienate. So that really tells us that we're still living in a racist society. I mean, what I do as a casting director, and this is also good to remember for actors that in commercial work and in a lot of work, the the casting director is not the sale be all, that you're selling the actor to the client. Mm -hmm. And um, we can push for sure. And know that people like Yvette and myself are pushing when they say, you know, like, what are your selects? I will definitely make them see that there are other options to what they were originally looking for mm-hmm. um, and other stories that can tell or that can represent their brand or, you know, what their message. The head of the agency that I exclusively work is also very good at this and does that, you know, without being an act, you know, <laughs> uh, very much pushes for another perspective. I also think it's important to uh, keep in mind uh, differently abled trans that so it's always important to to open up the conversation to different possibilities that maybe they weren't aware of Mm -hmm. to begin with because sometimes like it it, sometimes it's like sometimes people are straight up racist but sometimes like people just haven't thought about it like it hasn't even occurred to them because of (laughs) of the way that right they they are like their abilities and the abilities that they have seen on screen they're that's just the norm and where you're like oh how about just somebody in a wheelchair or some uh, how about somebody that's blind you know and they're like oh that could work and I never even thought about it so I think yeah definitely that's important going back to uh, uh, the other question of what you can do is just just go for it because even if as an actor you know maybe you're indigenous and you think whatever Liberty Mutual is never going to go for someone like me to represent their brand but a lot of also times they are looking for you know someone different they just don't know what and so if you you're like hey look at me I've got shaved head and I'm indigenous and you know I'm uh, non-binary or whatever I mean that's awesome because there are also people that were like I need something new and this is fresh and exciting and uh, so just submit be true to yourself represent yourself Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just keep keep submitting because a lot of people, especially newer actors, I've in my experience, I've seen that they submit to so many things and they're like, oh, well, I've had a Casting Networks account for six months and I haven't gotten anything. I'm like, okay, keep submitting. What do your photos look like? Do you have any actors clips? Do you know how to do a self-tape audition? You know, what do those things look like? Because that might be the barrier. And then if they're like, oh, I just have one picture or what's a self-tape? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yes, those are those are things that I, I think we can talk about for forever. And also, uh, you um, actors, if if they're tight on money, they don't need to pay for accounts in order to get auditions. There are many places where they can go and Facebook and Instagram with like I've also um, found people by DMing or by searching hot hashtags like I did a Dove, um, Dove commercial recently, I found a lot of my 
people through just hashtagging certain things Mm -hmm. and then they will come up and then I will DM them. And some people, one person was like, this, this is shady. (laughs) And I'm like, well, you can, you know, here's a website, totally understand, totally respected. If, if, you know, you, you know, you see that I'm legit, fantastic. If not have a great life, I really appreciate your time. Um, but, uh, and then I think that I pose in Facebook, uh, groups all the time. So all cities should have like an actor's talent and there's like thousands of those mm-hmm. and then you can be savvy about it. So you don't have to break the bank if you don't have the extra funds. That was going to, that is one of my questions is what casting websites do you use? And then what non-traditional, um, ways to cast you use? You said you use a lot of Facebook groups, you used Instagram. So what you guys use casting networks, frontier, what casting websites do you use? All of the above. Yeah. And actors access too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I use for a lot of times I don't have time to use Instagram, unfortunately. Um, A lot of times the jobs come in and they want someone booked in three days and I don't have time for that. I just post on actors access. And I think, I don't know. I mean, maybe you can test this as actors access, one of the cheapest out there to post or, or, or to, 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 to sign up and some yeah, actors stuff. access is very fairly priced. The super expensive one is casting networks before they did the merge thing. Mm-hmm. I was paying a little more than $500 a year for two okay. accounts because I had my LA and my San Francisco yeah. San Francisco cities. I, I love casting networks. Yeah. Because I, I find it, uh, it's really easy to search for talent. Like sometimes people submit and people are great. The submissions are great, but sometimes I'm looking for something very specific and I love their search algorithm. Their talent. I can, yeah. I can, I can, I can look all five, eight people like, and then I'll have thousands of people that are just five, eight. And I don't think a lot of, I don't know. I don't think um, actors access can do that. And I don't like breakdown no. express and I don't think ca- uh, casting frontier can do that. So I'm very surprised because I assume that all of these casting websites, when you log on, I assumed you would be able to do that. They Not easily. And yeah. do you guys pay in order to post? No, yeah. that's, that's why it works. Right. But, yeah. um, I, going back to actors access is one thing that pissed me off. It's like, the they can't you have to actually filter through union non union and i i love that in casting networks they say it right away and it's really simple to see it and when you're when you're casting a job that's union or non-union like you can't you know you can't do either or it's easier to see thumbnails of thousands of people and like just you know, be able to know right away if they're union or non-union. I also wanted to ask you ladies, if there's anything that you see in self-tapes that uh, mistakes that happen all of the time that you would just like to bring some light to. And this is especially for the newer actors that maybe haven't done it so much, but I would love to hear like something that just gets you a little frustrated because you see it like 10 times a day. (laughs) I'll let Roxana start on this one. (laughs) If it's, I guess if it's like two to three line side sides, you know, like a dialogue, be off don't read it to me. I don't know. When I was in the room, when I used to cast in the room a lot, um, obviously uh, pre-pandemic, I would not mind if someone was reading at all. Like callback, yes. I mean, if you're in a callback, I mean, just be a book, you know, like because casting commercials, you have to shoot, you know, the director gets, uh, has to shoot everything in a day, two days. If, if they're not, if you know, they're not going to be able to memorize lines e- immediately, that's like no go. <laughs> you need to come prepared to a callback, like 100%. And in and an audition, it's fine if you come in with the sights in the hand and you're reading, totally yeah. fine. But like when someone's obviously reading, you know, it's like you're just put it in print. If you need words, just just put them kind of yeah, in a like I, have, I have a video of this, of course, but I have a teleprompter app that pops up right on your screen. So that can even be your eye line if you put it opposite of your camera. And I have used that before when it's it's like, okay, you know, you need to perform this monologue and it's a long monologue. And I'm like, I can get it down 90%. And then if I could just take a quick look, right you know, Mm -hmm. then I could be off book and perform so much better. So I love that. Yes. Yeah. Can memorize your lines, especially if it's just a few lines, like you can do it. And if you're bad at memorizing practice, because you will get so much better. A couple of things on that. 
Um, the first is if you're going to do two takes, do two very different takes, yeah. like just kind of don't give me the same read because what's the point, right? That's the point of two takes. Do one interpretation and then maybe like go a little nuts or, you know, be creative with it. It's fine. Uh, but I want to see a range. I think that's the most important thing that casting directors look like, uh, like look for is that someone can go from point A to point B. And then the other two things are very technical. Horizontal, please. Like, <laughs> unless I'm asking you specifically to do it vertical because it's, that's the, the spot. Because keep in mind, I'm sharing this with the client. It's not going to look good. You're going to look like the jerk that, that did vertical and everybody else is going to do horizontal. And also like, this is, this is a good acceptable thing. I don't need to see this. <laughs> and I don't need to see this. Hi. Oh gosh, yes, I get that still. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah yes and I have a lot of videos yeah. about those sort of thing of just like yeah. clear like I would not audition in front of this unless it was you know a commercial audition for like, that's a acceptable film at home you know usually I have paper backdrops I'm just like look at me you mm -hmm. don't need to know what I have back here <laughs> but, but if that, that, the yeah. script if, if the script is you know she's in her living room it's actually pretty helpful, you know, okay. to to be to be in um, on set, you know, on, that looks like a set, you know, because it helps the client see you what they're know. going to look like in the commercial, and that is why, like, um, like if I love somebody, I'll have them, and they're like this, and I'm just like, oh my god, but their look is so perfect. I'll have them do it again, you know, and I'll tell them. Yeah, but it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And props can work too if it doesn't get too distracting. Like if the mm -hmm. script has a prop, I, I love it when, you know, like if, if it's a phone call, I love it when you actually have a phone instead of an air phone. Yes. Because why not? You have a phone. Why not use it, right? And then the last thing about this is like, please label your file because we get so many submissions and if you lose someone, they're not going to get in the pitch. Because you're like, I, I, don't, I don't know who this person is, right? And like, sometimes yeah. you do have the time and energy to look through and find it. But especially if your email is guy at gmail.com, like, how am I going to find you? And how do you like people to label your files? Usually my agents have um, first name, first name, last name, and then the role, and then they're the agent. The agents, uh, the agency. I usually watch auditions through Equalcast on Actors Access if I if I'm doing it all through Actors Access. But sometimes they're late or or someone has a valid excuse and they just send, or their agents just send to me the file uh, in email. Definitely always include role in there and uh, and and uh, first and last name of the talent. Yeah, those just three things are important to me. I don't know if I need anything else. Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't need the agent. I I don't need. The, even the project name, like I just need the role and the name of the person. Cool. That's super helpful. I was thinking that I don't know if I've actually seen any conversation with actor and casting directors because this is also helpful for me That's as a true. casting director to know how and what an actor thinks. Yeah. So this is like a I very good thing. To do, yeah, I would love to do like other videos where we talk the whole time about one thing specifically because I feel like I was trying to move us along because um, I can talk forever. Thank you ladies so yeah. much for joining me today. I'm excited to share this information with everybody and um, thank you. Any Anything else you want to say? Let us know what is helpful and what you would like to see, you know, what questions you have so we can try yeah. to get the whole uh, point of the uh, Instagram account is is to inspire and guide you if you're you know new to the industry new to in front of camera um to help you mm -hmm. so. thank you so much yvette and roxana for coming onto my channel today i really 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 appreciate it and um i hope you guys enjoyed it please leave any questions if you want us to include it in future videos like roxana was saying it is beneficial for the both of us and you know we're like co-workers they're casting directors we're actors we're co-workers that haven't met yet so it's a really great opportunity to be able to chat with them and get some questions answered so thank you so much for watching and at the end of every video i feature another channel this is today's feature if you would like to be featured on my next video make sure you're subscribed like this video and leave me a comment